Well, hi everybody. This is your commish, just welcoming you to the week 10 Terrible Tendies Fantasy Football Recaps. I hope you all had a great last week. There was some really great games last week, as you know, though. I was on the road helping Vagenda of Manicide's parents move down and getting all packed up. So as you can see behind me here, I've got quite a load of empty boxes. Quite a load. Anywho, on to some recaps. All right, gang, we are going to kick things off with a little nighttime recap action here. Just pulling into uh, Walgreens, picking up a prescription. So let's start off here with a no punt intended and ambitious but rubbish. No punt intended, 70.9 points, ambitious but rubbish, getting the win at 99.1 points. Um, we're going to start with no punt intended here. Definitely came into the week averaging over 100 points a game. Uh, you got to think that you were going to be really secure for the playoffs. Um, all you had to do was do your average, and that did not happen. Um, you exited here today with a 500 record. Got to have that win next week if we want to get into the playoffs, and that's something hopefully we'll be talking a little bit about later. Um, but right now, you're walk backing in basically the playoffs with a three-game losing streak. This week, only two players scored in double digits. That would have been Matt Forte and Drew Brees. Forte coming in, 109 all-purpose yards, 11.6 points. Not a bad game for him. And Drew Brees, 303 yards, three touchdowns. Due to his two interceptions, though, um, only finished with 20.9 points, two points behind his season average. Um, got a note here, though, for no punt intended. He was without two key players this week as we roll through the final week of buys. Um, Andrew Luck and T.Y. Hilton both out. They combine, on average, per week about 30 points. So given that, that game would have been a much closer game had you been able to get those two guys in. But we'll have to definitely see kind of how that all works out. Uh, but on to the winning side of the ball. Ambitious but rubbish. Getting back to 500 football. Um two straight wins here now so really really good looking strong for next week half of your points this week were scored though by two players so let's look at those two players Terrell Williams and Big Ben Roethlisberger bruh, 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 bruh. All right, so Terrell Williams, season high, five receptions, 125 yards, a touchdown, 22.2 points. Really nice. You're going to be watching here. This is his 51-yard touchdown grab. So huge, huge game for Terrell Williams. Uh, Big Ben Roethlisberger just keeps getting better. I mean, he's injured, doesn't matter. He comes in 408 yards, three touchdowns, 29.1 points. And I know it was a devastating loss for Big Ben that week. But let's take a look at that fourth quarter. That fourth quarter was awesome. This little spike, fake spike thing that, oh, dude, forget about it. But according to the Elias Sports Bureau, Big Ben's late game efficiency was historic. The last quarterback to throw 13 for 13 or better in the fourth quarter, 13 for 13 in the fourth quarter alone. But the last time that that happened was by Jim Everett of the 95 Saints. So just a huge, huge game. Massive performance in the fourth quarter, as he normally does for Big Ben. Um, but way to go, ambitious but rubbish. Killing it right now, trying to get back into the playoffs. Um, you're back to 500. Good on you. 99.1 points. <laughs> Prescription. All right, now that we picked that up, we're going to go grab some grub over here at some Merrick's. So while we're pulling through the uh, parking lot, why don't we talk another little fantasy football. So we're going to talk here about Lock, Stock, and Doc versus Buyer's Remorse. Lock, Stock, and Doc, 91 and a half points, not a bad showing, but just running into that steam train that is Buyer's Remorse, 141.2 points. Just continues to crush it. Uh, we'll get to that in a second, but let's start with Lock, Stock, and Doc side of the ball. Um, currently... They're on the outside looking in at four and six. Um, we'll have to see there may be a small chance if the right stars align for them to come in and get a win um, next week to see if they can get into the playoffs. But 
<clears throat> definitely on the outside looking in right now. Uh, but one of the best on his team, Jordy Nelson, had his second best game of the season, which is really good to see. Third straight week uh, with 94 yards or more and a touchdown. He ended the day with 12 receptions, 126 yards, a touchdown for 23.6 points. So really, really good job out of Jordy Nelson there. Um, and again, it seems like every week we talk about this kid, Dak Prescott. That was just an amazing fourth quarter. We just got done talking about it. Um, had his best passing game of the season. Despite a fumble, um, he will still remain the starter. But, wow, two huge touchdowns. Let's talk about those touchdowns. He had an 83-yarder, which you're probably watching now. And then he also had a massive 50-yard touchdown to Des Bryant. Let's be real. That's probably the one I'm showing you right now. That was just awesome. It was all throw. 319 total yards, two touchdowns, 21 points. Real big day for Dak Prescott. But on to the winning side of the ball with Byers Remorse. Just a little insight. Byers Remorse has never scored less than 110 points since week four when he scored 56.6. That was his one blemish on the, on the year. Um, this week he had his best week of the season, and you can see that in his bench. His bench gave LSD a run for their money. His bench had 88 points. Just phenomenal, crazy, huge scoring. Um, but 141 points for Buyer's Remorse is his high mark so far of the of the season. We'll have to see what happens next week. Let's talk a little Delaney Walker, though. Definitely got his best game of the season from him. First 100-yard game of the season. He had nine receptions, 124 yards. His touchdown was an amazing halfback pass. Um, you might be looking at that now. We might show that later. But just an awesome little trick play, 22.4 points. And we talked about Dash Prescott with LSD. It seems like every week we have to bring this guy up for buyer's remorse. David motherfucking Johnson. Holy cow. Nine for nine this season with 100-plus all-purpose yard games. He did it again. 101-yard all-purpose yards. He got his touchdown, 23.8 points. But the big, big, big winner for buyer's remorse this, this week was Marcus Mariota. Now, his past two weeks... Marcus Mariota has scored four touchdowns. Just crazy. He had three touchdowns this week in the first half alone. But two weeks in a row now, he's got four touchdowns, 295 yards, four touchdowns, 25 and a half points. So welcome, Buyer's Remorse. I don't think there's a way that you're going to be able to not get into the playoffs. Welcome first year in, making it big. Way to go, Buyer's Remorse. Catch you more on the flip side. Hey everybody, how you doing? Welcome back. Just picked up some Zamerics there for Vagenda of Man Aside. Gonna get some dinner ready. I'm gonna swing over to BK, get me a chicken sandwich right over here. Um, but while we're doing that, let's talk a little bit. Jesus Tits MD versus Jim Kelly's Little Nippers. Jim Kelly's Little Nippers getting the win 120.2 points to Jesus Tits MD 67.6 points. Now on to the good doctor side of the ball. This marks only the third time this season that he has scored less than triple digits, uh, which is really, really hard to fathom that he has a four and six record. Wow, last two games, just been brutal losses. Uh, this game though, definitely was earned. Only one player scored in double digits and that player was AJ Green. AJ Green this season has only had one game where he has not caught 50 yards or more and this game this week was no different. Seven receptions, 68 yards, a touchdown for 15.1 points. So really, really, really good job. Uh, we'll talk about it hopefully here a little bit later. You've got almost a for sure win against big old TDs coming up the last week of the season, um, but I'm not so certain if that'll even be enough to get you into the playoffs. So we'll have to kind of look at that and see. But on to the winner side of the ball here. Um, we're gonna talk about Jim Kelly's Little Nippers. Best score of the season by far this week, just like Buyer's Remorse just keeps pumping it up over the last couple of weeks. Um, best week of the season for Jim Kelly's before week uh, 10 here, 108 points back in week seven. Add 12 more to that, and you have this week 120 points. So huge game. It all started with Colin Kaepernick. He definitely had his best game of the season, and by that I mean he didn't turn the ball over for you this season or this week. 210 passing yards and a touchdown, 55 rushing yards and a touchdown, 20 and a half points. Really, really great job out of Colin Kaepernick. And then we'll talk now a little bit about Russell Wilson, the other quarterback you had. So despite a lack of rushing. Russell Wilson looked pretty mobile this week. He looked pretty mobile. Uh, 348 yards, three touchdowns, 23.6 points. 
Really well done there. And then, of course, Ravens defense had their best game of the season, probably the only game worth starting them this season. Uh, seven points allowed, two interceptions, a fumble recovery for 25 points. Um, but the real big winner and the great thing that we have been waiting all season for uh, for Jim Kelly's Little Nippers was Le'Veon Bell. Le'Veon Bell finally got into the end zone. He finally got into the end zone this week. Um, and you know what? It felt so good. He did it twice. That's right. 134 all-purpose yards, seven receptions, two touchdowns, 28.4 points. So way to go, Jim Kelly's Little Nippers. Things only look better from you for you from here. Um, can't wait to see what happens when you hit the playoffs. But I'm going to go ahead and pull in here. Get a little food. Hey man, Chicago that looks pretty good. I was wearing mine up until. Yes. It was great. That was I still know how to react about it, you know, it's like yeah. 108 years. Mm -hmm. That's a ridiculously long time. Stupid crazy. I thought Cleveland was gonna do it at first. The first oh, the when they got when they got to that point, I was like, when they got that three three to one lead, I was like, no, it's over, it's right. done, it's done. <laughs> this is like what the third time this year this happened. Yeah. Twice in yeah. Yeah. Wow. Crazy man. See you later, man. Peace. Well, good morning, everybody. As you can see, I have at least one travel companion in the shop. Oh, there's Cooper. There's my second travel companion. We are heading down, gonna surprise Vagenda of Manicide here, picking up some breakfast for her. Uh, believe it or not, she's actually getting ready to go to Music History. So we're gonna see if we can get down to Dunkin' Donuts and then beat it down to, uh, down to Drake University campus. But while we're doing that, let's go ahead and talk another couple of matchups here. We're gonna kick this off with my own matchup, Nuck Nuck Moose K versus Big Old TDs. Um, definitely happy that I got this win. 104.9 points to Big Old TDs, 73 points. Keeping my playoff hopes alive, so super happy there. But for Big Old TDs, he reminded us all that Darren Sproles continues to be a PPR worthy running back. Um, this week he had 76 all purpose yards eight receptions for 10.2 points so really good week out of darren sproles also uh the other big shout out for big old tds was alan robinson he had his best game of the season he finally broke through finally broke that century mark um, ended up with nine catches 107 yards a touchdown for 22.7 points so Really great to see some uh, some good scores coming out of there. But on to my side of the ball, we're going to talk about Larry Fitzgerald. Now, Larry Fitzgerald, despite a sore knee, um, which he's, we'll see what happens this week. He may not even play. But despite that sore knee, he set season high marks for receptions and yards. 12 receptions, 133 yards, 18.3 points. Just awesome, awesome work out of him. And, a, and uh, so, yeah, that's really great to see. We'll see what happens here this coming week. Sounds like he was wearing a knee brace in practice um, and some drills. So who knows if he's going to be starting, but that I'll definitely need him to pull through. Uh, but let's talk a little Aaron Rodgers here. So forget, just forget the one and three record, okay? Just forget about it because Aaron Rodgers has brought his in. That's right, Holly. Aaron Rodgers has brought his, yeah. Thir he has averaged 24 points a week over the last four weeks. Just awesome, awesome work out of him. 371 yards, two touchdowns for 22.7 points this week. Absolutely amazing. To wrap it up for me though, I have to talk about my man LeGarrette Blunt. Now, but LeGarrette Blunt doesn't get in yards. He more than makes up in touchdowns. This week was no different. He now leads the NFL with 12 rushing touchdowns on the season. He only had 69 yards but he had three touchdowns for 24.9 points. Now, personally, I think he should have had a fourth one because down in that goal line at the very end of the game, they gave it to him once, and they should have just fed the piggy every time. It works every time for him, but they didn't do it. I don't know. Try to throw it up to Gronk. Eh, whatever. But 69 yards, three touchdowns. So thankful that I picked up LeGarrette Blunt off the uh, waivers. He has just been huge for me this season. So, well, there you have it. I'll be back with another recap shortly.
We're just getting on to the interstate here. We're going to talk a little 12 Monkeys versus Vagenda of Manicide. Now, this was one of my favorite matchups this week. Um, really, really close, close game uh, between these two. Had some pretty huge potential playoff um, implications, but none of that happened as 12 Monkeys got the win. 86.3 points to Vagenda of Manicide's. 81.4. So let's talk a little bit about Vagenda Manicide. Um, when we were heading into Monday Night Football, there was only a few points separating. There was 83 to 71 was the score. Um, 12 Monkeys only had his kicker left. Vagenda Manicide had their tight end. Now normally a tight end versus a kicker, they're you know not gonna, neither one of them is going to pull up that many points. But we're talking about Tyler Eifert here. Um, he had a huge game last week. Was set up to have another huge game this week. Um, and he just about pulled it off. Uh, I think it was the first or second play from scrimmage. He ripped off a 71-yard catch, um, which pulled him really, really close. And believe it or not, he almost had a chance to win it for him. He actually missed a touchdown. Uh, but Tyler Eifert ended with three receptions, 96 yards, 10.6 points, just that close to help him pull it out. Uh, we also have to talk about Cam Newton, of course. So anytime we talk about Vagenda Manicide, you got to mention Cam. He had a great first half of the game, uh, both passing and rushing the ball. 261 passing yards, 54 rushing yards. He had two touchdowns, 21.4 points, so really big game from him. And, of course, Des Bryant has continued to wow people um, every time he gets on the field. He had his best game of the of the season, six receptions, 116 yards, a 50-yard touchdown bomb, which you're probably watching right now, uh, for 21.6 points. That 50-yard bomb coming, we already talked a little bit about Dak Prescott earlier. That 50-yard pass was just awesome, um, straight on the money, and oh, so good, so good. Let's take a look. Now, on the 12 monkey side of the ball, um, like we said, he barely won that by the skin of his teeth. He remains tied for first place. Um, I think right now he is sitting second in the seeding order uh, for the playoffs. But let's talk about how he got there. Jameis Winston had his most passing yards since week three this season, um, and he did it by evading tacklers. You're watching a few of those plays right here. Um, he is now throwing two plus touchdowns each week over the last month. So he's had some really, really good fantasy scores going on. 312 yards, two touchdowns, 17 points. So really good game out Jameis Winston. He just continues to get better. I'm a little worried as he goes up against my Chiefs this next week. We'll see what happens. Um, DeMarco Murray, he became the first non-quarterback with a rushing and a throwing touchdown in the same game since the Steelers' John Henry Johnson did so in December 11th of 1960. So no other non-quarterback had had a throwing touchdown and a rushing touchdown since 1960. DeMarco Murray, amazing play here. Um, now, realistically, his most impressive touchdown was probably this 75-yard gallop that he had. Uh, just blew it up and ran in. 75-yard touchdown there. He had 166 all-purpose yards. That includes running, passing, and receiving. 166 all-purpose yards, two touchdowns, 29.3 points. So really, really good job out of DeMarco Murray there. Um, we're going to be pulling up, getting off the interstate here in a little bit. Traffic's a little heavy, so I'm going to go ahead and sign off. We'll see you later. Alrighty guys, welcome back. Just got done uh, delivering off some uh, tasty McDonald's breakfast to Vagenda Man Aside. Um, we're going to go ahead and wrap things up here with our final recap of the week. That's right, Holly, the final recap. Um, we're going to be talking about Chicago Guns 
versus T.I. Bionic Man. Chicago Guns narrowly, narrowly defeating 119.1 points versus 113.1 for T.I. Bionic Man. Um, this matchup was just had massive, massive playoff implications. Um, and because Chicago Guns got the win, um, that pushed T.I. Bionic Man down to 500 at 5-5. Five and five. This is going to open up a lot of doors for anybody at 4-6 and six going into the last week. Um, you guys still now have a chance to make the playoffs with this loss by T.I. Bionic Man. But let's look at some of the highlights for him. So Cameron Brat, Brat, we'll go with Brat. I like Brats better than Brats. Uh, Cameron Brat set season highs for re, for uh, receptions and yards. Seven receptions, 84 yards, a touchdown. Uh, great for a tight end, pulling in 16.7 points. Another man also setting season highs for receptions and yards was Antonio Brown. 14 catches he had this week. Just amazing performance. 14 catches, 154 yards, got himself a touchdown for 26 points. Holly doesn't seem that much impressed. She's just kind of laying down there. Um, Cooper, no, that food's not for you. Over on to the other side, we're going to talk about Chicago Guns here with this 119 points. Like we said, it was a really tight game, and a lot of it became down because Chicago Guns decided to go ahead and start Terrence West um, in the uh, offensive player position instead of Doug Baldwin. Terrence West only racked up about eight points, while Doug Baldwin, on the other hand, went off, and it nearly cost him. Doug Baldwin, best game of his season, six catches, 59 yards, three total touchdowns. I mean, that's just crazy. Yardage, not so good, just like LeGarrette Blunt, but three touchdowns for 25.9 points. So huge game out of Doug Baldwin. Um, also, but he was on his bench, which is crazy. But Joe Flacco um, was in the starting lineup. Uh, he definitely had his season high for touchdowns. He had three touchdowns, 296 yards, 19.3 points. But the story of the week, the story of the season, it seems like we always, 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 when we talk about Chicago Guns, always have to bring up Ezekiel Elliott. So Chicago Guns, all he has to do is say, thank you, Ezekiel Elliott, because Ezekiel Elliott gave Chicago Guns the win this week. He had 114 rushing yards, two touchdowns. Now, those two touchdowns both came in the fourth quarter of that Steelers uh, Cowboys game. Both came in the fourth quarter in the last two minutes. That was just an insane game. Uh, but 114 rushing yards, two touchdowns. He had two receptions for 95 yards, including this 83-yard touchdown run and catch. Um, just ripped that off earlier in the game. So three total touchdowns. It was Ezekiel Elliott's first game in which he had three total touchdowns and his first game that he had more than 200 all-purpose yards um, in a game. So just monster, monster performance. 41.6 points for Ezekiel Elliott. Um, I can't say enough. I am super excited for the Cowboys. I know my Chiefs right now are doing really well, but man, if the Cowboys finally make it back to the Super Bowl, unlike the last times when I was rooting for the Bills, you're welcome, Jim Kelly and your little nippers. Um, I think I might have to root for the Cowboys in the Super Bowl this season if they make it because Dak Prescott, given the keys, he's going to be their starting quarterback until he just royally fucks up, which I don't think he will. And Ezekiel Elliott just been, he's the recoming of Emmett Smith, I think. Just awesome. 41 points this week. So, Way to go, Ezekiel Elliott. I had to ramble there a little bit so you can see all these highlights because he just ripped it off. But way to go, Chicago Guns. 119.1 over TI Bionic Man, 113.1. So we're going to come back here in a little bit and we're going to do a look ahead into the playoff picture for you. More to come. 